welcome to chapter two. Um, we're going to focus on fractions in this chapter. We're going to talk about what fractions are, how to multiply them, how to reduce them. And it turns out we're going to use factoring a lot for reducing fractions. And then we're going to look at adding and subtracting fractions. And finally, we're going to look at dividing fractions. So the, the key is to understand the definitions, to work really hard, ask a lot of good questions, and you'll, you'll do fine. You'll do fine in this, in this section, especially if you have a good handle on, on factoring in chapter one. Speaking of which, look, before we get into fractions, let's look at this one. This was, this was something from the last problem set. We want to simplify this expression. So good algebra skills would be to probably uh, change it to additive form, right? And then carefully uh, add the top and bottom separately. You get negative 14 over negative 7. You get 2. Huh. Seems like it always goes unevenly. Well, it doesn't always go unevenly. That was all kind of rigged in chapter 1. Well, in chapter 2, they're not always going to go into evenly. Suppose it was like negative 14 over negative 8 or something. What would you do? So we're going to talk about that. Anyway, let's talk about fractions. Uh, fractions are numbers like, like this. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll define them in, in just a minute. But um, let's take a look at the fraction 2 thirds. Here's how you could think of it on the number line. First of all, the positive numbers are to the right. Negative numbers are to the left. So if, if you start at 0, and you go two-thirds of a unit, if you just divide this into thirds, two-thirds would be right about there, wouldn't it? To the right, two-thirds. Five halves. Well, if you divide the number line into halves, let's just keep dividing this into halves, okay? And you just go five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Five halves would be right about there. By the way, this is called an improper fraction because the numerator, this, this is what this is, we'll talk about this in just a minute, but the number on the top called the numerator, bottom's called the denominator. If ever the number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom, it's considered an improper fraction. So this would be a proper fraction, right? Because the, the top is smaller than the bottom. All right, how, how about negative four thirds? Negative four thirds is a negative number, so we go to the left. Let's just start dividing the number line into thirds. This is how, you, how they want you to do this in the homework. Just start dividing up into thirds. It doesn't have to be perfect. So negative four thirds, you start at zero. You go negative one third, two thirds, three thirds. Negative four thirds will be right there, right? About one and a fourth. This is called a mixed number. A mixed number is when you have a number next to a fraction. By the way, this is not a multiplication. In fact, this is addition. This is one and or one plus one fourth. So where would that be? Well, you start at zero, you go one unit. And then let's divide this up into fourths. Not only do you go one unit to the right, you go an additional one fourth unit. So it's about right there. Nine thirds, isn't that just three? So nine over three is the same as three when you divide, so it'd be right here. Negative seven halves, let's divide the number line into halves. So this would be a half, and a half, and a half, and a half. So where would negative seven halves be? Start at zero, and just go to the, go to the left seven units, one, or seven of these halves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's right about there, okay? Anyway, I, uh, so what is a fraction? A fraction is the ratio of two integers, okay? One integer divided by another. You gotta be careful here because we don't allow the bottom integer to be zero. So a fraction is the ratio of two integers where the bottom integer is not zero. And like I've been saying, the the integer on the top, or the expression on the top, if you're talking about alge algebraic fractions, the expression on the top is called a numerator, and the number or expression on the bottom is called a denominator. Okay? Okay, let's practice converting between improper fractions and mixed numbers. Maybe you remember this. It's an improper fraction because the numerator is bigger than the denominator, right? Remember how to do that? The way you convert from improper to mixed is you divide. 3 goes into 11 3 times, and there's 2 left over, so it would be 3 and 2 thirds. That's, that's how you would do it. You just use division. 3 goes into 11 3 times, and 2 is the remainder. So you put 3 plus 2 over 3. Let's go the other way. How do you go from a mixed number to an improper fraction? I think this is actually kind of easy. We're going to talk about why this works, by the way, later. But for now, remember, this is not a multiplication problem. This is 2 plus 2 fifths. The shortcut way to do it, and we'll talk about why it works later, is you multiply the denominator times this number, you get 10, and then you add this number, you get 12, 12 over 5. 
How about this one? Negative 17 over 6. That's an improper. You want to go to a mixed number. Okay, 6 goes into... It's going to be negative. So what I suggest you do is let's just keep the negative to the side. 6 goes into 17, what, uh, 2 times, and there's 5 left over. So it'd be negative 2 and 5, 6. So, so that, that's good advice. When you, when you see a negative number, just remember your answer is negative. This is really important that you, that you do that because you can, you can get the wrong answer if you go from this mixed number to an improper fraction. Watch, if you, if you just go 9 times negative 3, which is negative 27 plus 2 is negative 25, that's not right. It's the opposite of the whole thing. So what I'm saying is just ignore the negative sign and just go 9 times 3 is 27 plus 2 is 29 and then make your answer negative. Okay, so think of that negative as happening at the very end. Alrighty, well why don't you try and finish these on your own. Hit the pause button and see if you can finish these. Finish this table. Okay, on the first one, you would divide, let's see, 11 divided by 2, it goes to, 2 goes into 11 5 times and there's 1 left over. So it's 5 and a half. By the way, how can, I, how can you check this? How can you check to see if you did it right? Couldn't you go backwards? Multiply 2 times 5 and add 1. You get what you started with, right? This one, remember, don't be, be careful with that negative sign. Multiply 5 times 4 and add 3, that gives you 23 over 5, and then make your answer negative. Last one, 23 over 3. 3 goes into 21, what, 7 times and 2 left over? There you go. Alright, that wasn't too bad, was it? Alright. Okay, the last thing we're going to do here is introduce multiplication of uh, fractions. Multiplication of fractions is really nice, it turns out. When you multiply a one half times three fourths, the, the, the rule is you multiply straight across. The one multiplies the three, and you get three, and the two multiplies the four, you get eight. So when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators together, you multiply the denominators together. But let's see why. Let's see why, why that works. Think of it like, like this. This one half times three fourths, it really is one half of three fourths. It means the same thing. Times means of or you could say of means times, one half of three fourths. So think of it like this. Suppose this is like some kind of cake or pie or something here, and you have three fourths of it. That, that's how much is left, okay? Three fourths of it. Now what if you have half of that shaded portion? So it looked like that. That's half of three fourths, isn't it? See? So the question is, if you have half of three fourths, what fraction is this dark shaded portion of the whole pie? Isn't that just three eighths? See, so that's a nice way to way to think of it. Of means times. So one half times three fourths is one half of three fourths. Interesting, huh? Anyway, so there that motivates the definition. When you multiply two fractions, you multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. Why don't you try one? See if you can draw a picture. Uh, see if you can draw uh, uh, some rect rectangles to 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 show why two thirds of one fifth is two fi fifteenths. Here's, here's my advice. Start with one-fifth of a pie, okay? Take, take a pie or a cake or whatever and, 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 and take one-fifth of it. Then take two-thirds of that one-fifth and, and see what fraction of the whole pie you have left. Hit the pause button and try that. Okay, so there's one-fifth, right? Isn't that one-fifth of the pie or one-fifth of the cake right there? So I want, I want uh, two thirds of that piece. So two thirds of that piece would be this right, right here. This is two thirds of that one fifth. The question is what fraction is this of the whole pi now? And the answer is it becomes two fifteenths. If you count up, you get two of these. The total number of, of rectangles is 15. So this is two fifteenths. So that's the, that is the justification for why when you multiply two fractions, you multiply straight across. All right, we'll see you next time. We'll keep on going with this. Bye-bye.